Welcome back to Bombastic Nation and ting and ting and ting. Back with some more vibes for all year. And uh, this one is called The Difference Between the United Kingdom, Great Britain, and England Explained. Now, I've, I know the surface of it, but, you know, let me sort of solidify my understanding of what it is, you know. And uh, I know a lot of people here make, doesn't make the distinction, you know, and I know there is a distinction, but, you know, let's go ahead and YouTube and sim simmer and see what the vibe is all about. Explained by me, CGP Gray. The United Kingdom, England, Great Britain, are these three the same place? Are they different places? Do British people secretly laugh at those who use the terms incorrectly? Who knows the answers to these questions? I do, and I'm going to tell you right now. For the lost, this is the world, this is the European continent, and this is the place we have to untangle. The area shown in purple is the United Kingdom. Part of the confusion is that the United Kingdom is not a single country, but instead is a country of countries. It contains inside of it four co-equal and sovereign nations. The first of these is England, shown here in red. England is often confused with the United Kingdom as a whole because it's the largest and most populous of the nations and contains the de facto capital city, London. To the north is Scotland, shown in blue, and to the west is Wales, shown in white. And, often forgotten even by those who live in the United Kingdom, is Northern Ireland, shown in orange. Each country has a local term for the population. While you can call them all British, it's not recommended as the four countries generally don't like each other. The Northern Irish, Scottish, and Welsh regard the English as slave-driving colonial masters, no matter that all three have their own devolved parliaments and are allowed to vote on English laws, despite the reverse not being true, and the English generally regard the rest as rural yokels who spend too much time with their sheep. However, as the four constituent countries don't have their own passports, they are all British citizens, like it or not. They are British citizens of the United Kingdom, whose full name, by the way, is the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. So where is Great Britain hiding? Right here. The area covered in black is Great Britain. Unlike England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland, Great Britain is a geographical rather than a political term. Great Britain is the largest island among the British Isles. Within the United Kingdom, the term Great Britain is often used to refer to England, Scotland, and Wales alone with the intentional exclusion of Northern Ireland. This is mostly, but not completely true, as all three constituent countries have islands. You know, funny story about it. When I was really young, when I was a kid, I thought, I used to think, and that was way before, you know, I started, like, getting the, 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 the school in about it. I thought the British Isles meant the islands that were all called, uh, colonized, like, you know, Jamaica, Grenada. I thought they were all part of the British Isles, but quite obvious that's not what it is. And I knew that, you know, when I got into history more, I figured it out. But I always, there was a kid growing up, you know, I heard about the British Isles and I automatically thought they were talking about the islands in the Caribbean that were British colonies were, was included in that that are not part of Great Britain, such as the Isle of Wight, part of England, the Welsh Isle of Anglesey, the Scottish Hebrides, the Shetland Islands, the Auckland Islands, and the Islands of the Clyde. The second biggest island in the British Isles is Ireland. It's worth noting at this point that Ireland is not a country, like Great Britain is a geographical, not political term. The island of Ireland contains on it two countries, Northern Ireland, which we have already discussed, and the Republic of Ireland. When people say they are Irish, they are referring to the Republic of Ireland, which is a separate country from the United Kingdom. Oh. However, both the Republic of Ireland and the United Kingdom are members of the European Union, even though England in particular likes to pretend that it's an island in the Mid-Atlantic rather than 50 kilometers off the coast of France. But that's a story for another time. To review, the two largest islands in the British Isles are Ireland and Great Britain. Ireland has on it two countries, the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland, while Great Britain mostly contains three, England, Scotland, and Wales. These last three, when combined with Northern Ireland, form the United Kingdom. There are still many unanswered questions, such as why when you travel to Canada is there British royalty on the money? To answer this, we need to talk about empire. You can't have gone to school in the English-speaking world without having learned that the British Empire once spanned a fourth of the world's land and governed nearly a fourth of the world's people. While it's easy to remember the parts of the British Empire that broke away violently, we often forget how many nations gained independence through diplomacy, not bloodshed. These want-to-be nations struck a deal with the Empire, where they continue to recognize the monarchy as the head of state in exchange for a local autonomous parliament. To understand how they are connected, we need to talk about the crown. Not the physical crown that sits behind glass in the Tower of London and earns millions of tourist pounds for the UK, but the crown is a complicated legal entity best thought of as a one-man corporation. Who created this corporation? God did. According to British tradition, all power is vested in God, and the monarch is crowned in a Christian ceremony. God, however, not wanting to be bothered with micromanagement, conveniently delegates his power to an entity called the Crown. While this used to be the physical crown in the Tower of London, it evolved over time into a legal corporation soul, able to be controlled only by the ruling monarch. It's a useful reminder that the United Kingdom is still technically a theocracy, with the reigning monarch acting as both the head of state and the supreme governor of the official state religion, Anglicanism. Such are the oddities that arise when dealing with a thousand-year-old monarchy. Back to Canada and the rest. The former colonies that gained their independence through diplomacy and continue to recognize the authority of the crown are known as the Commonwealth Realm. 
They are, in decreasing order of population, Canada, Australia, Papua New Guinea, New Zealand, Jamaica, the Solomon Islands, Belize, the Bahamas, Barbados, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Grenada, Antigua and Barbuda, St. Kitts and Nevis, and Tuvalu. All are independent nations, but still recognize the monarchy as the head of state, even though it has little real power within their borders. There are three further entities that belong to the crown, and these are the crown dependencies, the Isle of Man, Jersey, and Guernsey. Unlike the Commonwealth realm, they are not considered independent nations, but are granted local autonomy by the crown and British citizenship by the United Kingdom, though the UK does reserve the right to overrule the laws of their local assemblies. Are we done now? Almost, but not quite. There are still a couple of loose threads, such as this place, the tiny city of Gibraltar on the southern coast of Spain, famous for its rock, its monkeys, and for causing diplomatic tension between the United Kingdom and Spain. But what about the Falkland Islands, which caused so much tension between the United Kingdom and Argentina that they went to war over them? These places belong in the last group of crown properties known as British Overseas Territories, but their former name, Crown Colonies, gives away their origin. They are the last vestiges of the British Empire. Unlike the Commonwealth realm, they have not become independent nations and continue to rely on the United Kingdom for military and sometimes economic assistance. Like the Crown Dependencies, every Everyone born within their borders is a British citizen. The Crown Colonies are, in decreasing order of population, Bermuda, the Cayman Islands, the Turks and Caicos Islands, Gibraltar, the British Virgin Islands, Akrotiri and Dekelia, Anguilla, St. Helena, the Ascension Islands, Tristan de Cunha, Montserrat, the British Indian Ocean Territory, the South Georgia and South Sandwich Islands, the Falkland Islands, the British Antarctic Territory, and the Pitcairn Islands. For our final Venn diagram, the United Kingdom is a country situated on the British Isles and is part of the Crown which is controlled by the monarchy. Also part of the Crown and the British Isles are the Crown Dependencies. The independent nations of the former empire that still recognize the crown are the Commonwealth realm, and the non-independent remnants of the former empire are the British Overseas Territories. Thank you very much for watching. Now when you think about it, they still kind of... <laughs> they still kind of uh, govern a large percentage of the world. That's, that was really interesting. I ain't even gonna lie. That was like really interesting right there. I enjoyed that. You know what I mean? And uh, now I have a better understanding of uh, the different, you know, United Kingdom, Great Britain, and England. Much better understanding. And it's also interesting to see where Grenada fall under that, my own country. Because uh, for a lot of... When I was there back, the last time I was there was what? When I left there, I should say, 1983, the Queen was still on our dollar bill and on some of our coins. And I think she still is. You know what I mean? So, indirectly, uh, they still have authority to a certain degree over a lot of the, 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 the countries that were colonized. That's interesting. Anyway, thank you guys for watching this with me. Hope you guys enjoyed this as, you know, as much as I did, and uh, that is so. This was quite informative. Anyway, in the meantime, y'all take care of each other, all right? Cool runnings.